Good evening. On this show, I make no excuses for highlighting how the channel migrant crisis is putting us all in danger. I feel very strongly that undocumented young men from goodness knows where flooding into Britain poses a direct threat to women and girls. Indeed, to us all, actually. I also think it's unfair. Taxpayers didn't vote for this, and yet you are being asked to pay for the privilege of your lives becoming worse as a result of the channel migrant crisis. I also don't believe that many of them are genuine asylum seekers. For the last couple of days, we've highlighted a man called Madapata, who, according to his social media accounts anyway, is trying to get to Britain. Here is a clip of him on what appears to be a beach in northern France. <laughs> Mm. He then made threats to kill Nigel Farage. Englishman, Nigel Passa, don't talk about me. You not know me. I come to England because I want to marry to with your sister. Don't talk about me more. I gonna come to England. I gonna pop, 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 mother. Well, Madapasa has just made a video about me. All people work here. He thank Madapasa come here. He uh, stand alive. He take a video. Now uh, everybody talk about uh, this uh, place or this gun or this uh, people. So everybody want to kill Madapasa. Don't talk about Madapasa more. Don't talk about Madapasa. Then this place is danger for me. Please, don't talk about me. Don't talk about me. I don't want somebody to talk about me. I would like to make you an offer, Madapasa. I would like to meet you in person. I'd like to know who you really are. I'd like to know why you want to come to Britain. You say you're not a danger to the people of Britain. Well, why don't we arrange to meet up and you can explain that to me in person? I'm happy to travel to wherever you are. Some of your videos say that you're in Britain. Others make it seem like you're in northern France. Some people think you're not actually trying to come to Britain at all and you're somewhere else in Europe playing a game with everyone on social media. Now, if this has all been a joke that's got out of hand, that's fine. But my email address is available online anyway, so everybody out there can always get a hold of this. So this is nothing new. It's patrick.christies at gbnews.uk. Or, because you obviously have social media, you can just find me on Twitter, at Patrick Christies, and send me a direct message. Send me your phone number. We can arrange to meet up. I'll bring an interpreter with me so that we can communicate properly. I really do hope to hear from you. But on that note, Keir Starmer has just U-turned again. Here he is slamming the Tories for using migrant hotels. They sit in hotels and digs for months on end at the taxpayers' expense. Last year he promised to end the hotel farce. That's the talk. But because of his mess, there are thousands of people who can't claim asylum and can't be returned. So where does he actually think they're going to end up? But today it's emerged that Labour has put calls out to asylum providers looking for more space at hotels after a surge in illegal arrivals. Now, this could mean reopening hotels that closed or finding new ones, which, yep, you will all be paying for. Starmer said he wanted to clear the backlog. Now he's coming up against his lawyer mates, who want to use every trick in the book to slow it down. You reap what you sow, Sir Keir. Let's get thoughts from my panel, the director of the Popular Conservatives, Mark Littlewood. We've got businessman and activist Adam Brooks, and we've got the political commentator, Zoe Grunewald. Uh, Mark, just on this Keir Starmer stuff, you know, expanding the use of migrant hotels. I mean, actually, that is... Uh, <laughs> we were used to him doing things that weren't in the manifesto. This is actually just the opposite of something that was in the manifesto. Yeah. No, exactly right. I mean, they haven't got to grips with this at all, have they? Look, let me try and be as sympathetic as I can be, even though I'm not a political ally of the Prime Minister. You've got two big issues here that you're facing. One is the stock, if you like, and the other is the flow. Those are slightly inhumane ways of describing the all of these human beings, but you've got this backlog problem of everybody who's already here, and you've got it being added to. 
I don't expect a government to be able to solve that overnight by magically clicking their fingers. But their only strategy to date has been smash the gangs. Mm -hmm. I mean, how's that going so far? That seems to be the only tool in their toolbox, the only golf club in their, in their, in their uh, armory. So I want to hear from them what their strategy is to turn this around in six, eight, 12 months, something like that. And there doesn't seem to be anything at all. So if they said, look, it's going to get worse for a short period of time, but here's our thought out plan to make it better over the long term, I'm all ears. But the silence is deafening. Yeah, the, the point with this, this Madapasa stuff, uh, Adam, and look, we remains to be seen what, what, the, what the reality is with this guy. I hope he gets in touch and we can maybe find out. But is that people have been saying for quite a long time that there is a very real and present danger from the people who are coming across the channel. Mm -hmm. and, I, I mean, I'm the one of them. The, the, evi the evidence would suggest that maybe Madapasa is one of those individuals. Yeah, look, I, I've been on this this TV channel for three years now, talking about the danger of some of these men that are coming across. I've been on social media 10 years warning of the dangers. We are importing men, and mainly men, from places like Afghanistan, Pakistan, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, that seemingly do not understand that they cannot touch our women and our children. The crime rates across Europe that are actually documented with asylum seekers um, is terrifying. In places like Germany, rape, sexual assault and violent crime mm. has skyrocketed and the, the, the official figures show that it's disproportionately asylum seekers and migrants. We are putting our head in the sand in this country if we don't think that's mm. happening here. We are being put at danger and it's got to stop. I think, I think the point as well is, is that, you know, OK, obviously not every single person coming across the channel or, or, or every single asylum seeker... You know, one is, one like is too many, but, Patrick. But there, is, but there is clearly an open door there for mm. people who, who are, and that is a problem. So it's Keir Starmer, and just in the last couple of days, we've had this, you know, this call go out for uh, increased use of, of migrant hotels, which he was on record numerous times slamming the Tories for. Also, I think it's 520 million quid for the asylum processing centres for at least another eight years. Mm. It does look a lot like a bloke who is not going to stop the boats. Well, I mean, I think we have to remember that Labour have only been in power for just over 100 days. I mean, they have inherited an appalling system, mm. immigration system left by the Conservatives where they let um, asylum processing just pile up. They basically stopped processing asylum claims. Um, they created unsustainable systems of piling asylum seekers into hotels um, and barges mm. and other unsuitable accommodation that wasn't safe and created community tensions and all sorts of issues. Wasn't safe for the refugees, wasn't, you know, and, and the, it wasn't good for the community either. Um, and now they are trying to okay. sort it out and they have, you know, over 10 years of that to, to do so. All right. But they okay. stopped our only deterrent. It might only have been one policy, but they got rid yeah. of that. I, I think they need a clearer plan of clearing up that mess rather than just saying, what a mess. One, one, of the thing, can I just say, one of the things that and people will, 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 will know from watching the last couple of nights is that, that this particular chap, it appears on his TikTok that he's been documenting his travels across Europe and it appears that he's in northern France or certainly was until very recently. And there, what is abundantly clear is the prevalence of drugs and guns. Mm. So we know that that's just over there. You can see that on a clear day mm. from mm. Britain. So surely it's madness to allow people to keep coming from there and expecting everything to be fine. I mean, what has to happen before we do, we do something about that? Well, uh, I mean, eventually the British electorate are going to absolutely demand that we do something about it. The, the, I think uh, the Labour government is probably already losing the faith of the British electorate in this area, so many others. This is a very high priority for the electorate as a whole, a massive priority for an important segment of the electorate. And I'm looking for anyone to come forward and say, here is a medium term plan. I'm not expecting a short fix, but what needs to be done in the next, say, year, two or three years to completely change this? Uh, let me just say, we, we said this on the show a few weeks ago. There are gunfights happening on the streets of Calais. There are machete gangs going round, you know, chopping people up. Yeah. Now, that is only across the water. People do not understand. We've got lefty commentators and lefty media, you know, attacking anyone like me as racist for not wanting these people here. Mm. But we have got a serious danger just across the water, and they are coming. One of the one of the issues with with people like him, I don't just want to. I mean, he singled himself out really mm. because he's putting these videos out there. But people like that is that um, they, if he sets foot in Britain, 
then he will have to be considered for asylum under the government's laws. Surely that's wrong. Well, but you, you have to have a system where you process people's claims, don't you? I mean, we don't... He, he's putting himself on social media and being provocative, yeah. and so we already know that he, you know, there are, there are reasons why we might not think that he might be here for genuine reasons, but not everyone has that. People come here with, with no knowledge, and they have a right to have their asylum claim heard and processed. I mean, you know, I think we have to slightly take down the rhetoric. A lot of asylum seekers are genuinely fleeing war, persecution, and I understand that the public have lost trust in the government because it seems like it's got out of control. It seems that the government has deliberately not processed claims. They've lacked control over their immigration policy. But we do have to understand that asylum seekers, many of them are mm. genuine, well, and they have a right to be so here. So you're, you're a bit scruffy on that. I'll, I'll, get you to, I'll get you to answer why, but I'll also uh, ask you, if we are looking at committing now to more migrant hotels under Keir Starmer, that, for me, means, means more communities are going to be affected. Mm. And if we've already chocked the cities full, then this ends up being pushed into rural areas. Of course. And that really impacts rural areas. Uh, and you end up with... Oh, look, and where, where I've had a couple of relatives live is not, it's not particularly rural, but the two hotels that were in that town are now migrant hotels. That's unbelievable. And that's yeah. insane. Yeah, it, it, listen, it's, it, it is set to get worse. And Zoe's right to say Labour's only had 100 days plus. You can't blame everything immediately on them. Again, what's needed is maybe even accepting it's going to get worse for the next six or eight months, but then having a plan about how the stock and the flow will be dealt with. And look, I'm with Zoe on this. People need to have a fair hearing. Mm. But where I was going squiffy on it, mm. Patrick, is that hearing should be rapid. Mm. It should not yeah, take 18 totally. months. Absolutely. It should take yeah. 18 days. This chap who you've offered yeah. to me, I mean, I think that should only take 18 <laughs> minutes, his case. Mm. Uh, so it needs to be fast. And we need to be highly sceptical about people who are leaving well, safe havens to come here. He's, he's France come from is Sweden. not a dangerous yeah, country. He's come from this Sweden. man has yeah. come from Sweden. So my taxes, your taxes, are going to be spent on him. Now, if I find out and the public finds out yeah. that he's in a hotel being fed three times a day, free health care, when he's because done... Because he's, he's fle fleeing war yeah, and, and he's threatened our politicians, the country will erupt again. But there, is, there is, for my money, no story that is dealt with as lazily, as willfully lazily, by the establishment media than the Channel Migrant Crisis. And this is one of the reasons why I'm really pushing to try to go over to northern France, to speak to some of these people, to hopefully chat with, with our mate, Madapassa, um, because, like you said, they've all gone through other countries, and I want to find out from them themselves directly why they want to specifically come to Britain. And that's what I want to hear from them, as opposed to, why didn't you stay in Sweden? Why didn't you stay in Germany? Why didn't you stay in France? All of that. And I, we don't seem to be getting that from a huge amount of, of people in the media. And I, I would like the opportunity to go and do that. I don't like sitting here every single day and um, talking about this stuff without actually going and hearing I think that's it. really important. I think it's important to talk to people who we're actually talking about now and understand the reasons for them wanting to come to the UK. Many of them have family ties here. They speak the language. You know, because we're no longer a member of the EU and we don't have many safe and legal routes, there aren't many ways for them to get here apart from through illegal crossings. So I think it is really important to understand that journey. Because the, the aspect there with, with Madapassa, and again, we, 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 wait, we wait for more confirmation about who that guy really is. But what is interesting in his videos there is he doesn't actually ever talk about claiming asylum. He just talks about, I want to come to Britain. Yeah. Which in itself is fair enough, but you can do that legally. You know, and, and this is the thing, that's kind of what I want to get to the bottom of. You know, do these people actually honestly think about, well, are they really seriously in danger in their own countries or were they in danger in Europe? Is it just realistically about getting to Britain because maybe we offer them a bit more? I would suspect it is that, but I would like to go over there and, and hear it from them directly. But uh, anyway...